morning today we will discuss about psoriasis definition of psoriasis psoriasis is an autoimmune inflammatory papillomatous disorder of unknown etiology associated with systemic manifestations clinically it is characterized by sharply demarcated erythematous plaques with silvery white scales most common sites involved are scalp extensor aspect of extremities elbows knees and lumbosacral region it can also involve forms in soles etiopathogenesis there is a strong genetic predisposition with psoriasis hla association hla genes are hla cw0602 hla b13 hla b17 it causes epidermal hyperproliferation leads to antigen driven activation of auto inflammatory t cells leads to angiogenesis there is also multifactorial inheritance there will be over expression of t helper cell 1 mediated immune response leads to inflammatory markers like interleukin 2 interleukin 6 interleukin 8 interleukin 12 interferon gamma and tnf alpha what are the triggering factors first triggering factor is trauma trauma can cause kubner's isomorph phenomenon what are the types of trauma mechanical trauma chemical trauma radiation induced trauma and infections can trigger psoriasis mainly group a beta hemolytic streptococcal infection and hiv infection group a beta hemolytic streptococcal infection mainly causes gutted psoriasis hiv infection mainly causes erythrodermic psoriasis and stress factor alcohol smoking and metabolic factors include pregnancy and hypocalcemia and exposure to sunlight can in trigger psoriasis what are the drug induced psoriasis what are the drugs causing psoriasis nsaids example paracetamol diclofenac and ibuprofen bifenamic acid the ac inhibitors enalapril captopril and beta blockers propranolol lithium anti malarials like hydrochlor hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine and terbin antifungal systemic antifungal terbinafil calcium channel blockers nifedipine amlodipine etc and withdrawal of high potent topical steroids can lead to psoriasis patient profile males and females are equally affected based on the age there is bimodal age group distribution psoriasis affects two age group distribution of people first peak will be second and third decade second peak between fourth and fifth decade and three fold higher risk in siblings of patients with onset before 15 years of age history most of the patients are asymptomatic 90% of the patients are asymptomatic only 10% of the patients will have mild itching a uh, gutted psoriasis is usually preceded by upper respiratory tract infection they will have fever sore throat throat pain etc and a classical presentation is sharply demarcated erythematous plaques with silvery white scales what is kubner's isomorphic phenomenon new lesions appear at the sites of injury or to the trauma of the skin what is reverse kubner's phenomenon actual clearance of the lesions following trauma to the skin what is the morphology of the psoriasis lesion classical lesion is erythematous round to oval well defined scaly plaques with sharply demarcated borders scales would be psoriatic plaques typically have a dry thin silvery white scales most common sites are elbows knees extensor extremities scalp and sacral region in a symmetrical pattern palms and soles 
are also involved commonly. What is Auschwitz sign? And what is art of Grattage? There are three steps in art of Grattage. That is called Grattage test. First, on removal of the skills, there will be removal of the skills. On scratching with the blunt end of the glass slide, first there will be removal of skills. Removal of skills is due to parakeratosis of the lesion. <laughs> Second lesion is on further scratching, a smooth, glossy red membrane will be produced. That is called bulkless membrane. It is due to suprapapillary thinning. And the final stage is on further scratching of the lesion, it leads to pinpoint bleeding points. It is due to dilatation and tortuosity of the capillaries in the papillary, pap papillar dermis. That is called hospital sign or heart of grattage. What is Kubner's phenomenon? Linear distribution of the plaques seen along the scratch marks or at the site of trauma. What is Oronoff's ring? It is a zone of hypopigmentation or depigmentation around the existing psoriatic plaques. It is an indication of usage of high potent topical steroids over the psoriatic lesions. What are the classification of psoriasis? Based on the morphology, it is classified into plaque psoriasis, gutted psoriasis, pustular psoriasis, unstable psoriasis, and erythrodermic psoriasis. These are the classical types of psoriasis based on the morphological pattern. What are the atypical types? Ostaceous, rupeoid, elephantine, digital, and interdigital type of psoriasis. Gutted psoriasis is common in children and it carries good prognosis. Pustular psoriasis, the crops of pustules based on the erythema. Pustules will be sterile pustules. There is no secondary infection. Whereas in eczema, there is always a secondary infection. Most common organism caused by secondary infections in eczema are Staphylococcus aureus and Streptococcus pyogenes. Based on the pustules, we can differentiate whether it is an old lesion or new lesion. Yellow colored pustules indicative of new lesions. Brown colored pustules are indicative of old lesions. What is erythrodermic psoriasis? Psoriasis involving more than 90% body surface area is erythrodermic psoriasis. Based on the distribution or based on the site, it is classified into scalp psoriasis, SIBO psoriasis, mucosal psoriasis, including oral mucosa and genital mucosa, palmoplantar psoriasis, nail psoriasis, and inverse psoriasis or flexural psoriasis. Inverse psoriasis, the scalp psoriasis, first into the scalp psoriasis. In scalp psoriasis, there will be solitary or multiple discrete erythematous scaly plaques seen over the scalp, and it will be extending beyond the hair margins of the scalp and over the retroauricular region. This is typical of scalp psoriasis. Differential diagnosis of scalp psoriasis is seboric dermatitis. How to differentiate from seboric dermatitis? Seboric dermatitis will have oily, greasy, yellowish, thick scales. And it can be associated with other features of seboric dermatitis. What are the seboric areas? Seboric areas are scalp, external auditory canal, Glabella, median eyebrows, nasolabial fold, retroauricular fold, submental region, chest, back, and lumbosacral region. Coming to the mucosal psoriasis, there are two types of mucosal psoriasis oral mucosa and genital mucosa. In oral mucosa, psoriasis will present as geographic tongue or benign migratory glossitis. In genital psoriasis, it will present as annular plaque type of psoriasis over the glans penis. Coming to the palmoplantar psoriasis, what are the common sites involved in the palms? Most common sites are central palm, thinar eminence and hypothenar eminence. There will be over the soles, most common sites are instep areas of the soles, medial borders of the foot and lateral borders of the foot. In palmoplantar psoriasis, lesions will be well-defined scaly plaques over the palms and soles. 
associated with fishes fishes are indicative of pomoplantar psoriasis fishes are absent in eczema hand eczema hand and foot eczema what is nail psoriasis it is divided into two types nail bed psoriasis and nail blade psoriasis features of nail psoriasis are nail pits it will be irregular pits coarse pits and pits will be more than 20 in number is is an indication of nail psoriasis other features are distal onycholysis subungual hyperkeratosis salmon patch oil drop sign tracheonychia tracheonychia is 20 nail dystrophy or rough nails coming to the inverse psoriasis or flexural psoriasis it affects only the flexural areas mainly axilla inguinal folds and inframammary creases and it spares the typical extensor aspect of extremities elbows and knees and lumbosacral region for inverse psoriasis differential diagnosis in includes canidal intertrigo intertrigo over the groin psoriasis in children psoriasis if flocks are not thick it will be thin flocks and it will be less scaling uh, most commonly affected sites are diaper area in infants and flexural areas in children face involvement is more common in children than in adults coming to psoriasis in hiv psoriasis in hiv will have acute onset severe flares and poor prognosis hiv will present psoriasis as both plaque type of psoriasis and erythrodermic type of psoriasis coming to the psoriatic arthritis psoriatic arthritis is seen in 5 to 10 percent of psoriatic patients what are the types of psoriatic arthritis there are five types the classical type is distal interphalangeal joint involvement and second one is asymmetrical oligoarthritis third one is symmetrical polyarthritis it will be like a rheumatoid arthritis like pattern and fourth type is psoriatic spondylitis and fifth one is arthritis mutilans the classical type is dap joint involvement and the most common type is asymmetrical oligoarthritis it carries 70 percentage followed by symmetrical polyarthritis of rheumatoid type it accounts for 15 percentage what are the associations of psoriatic arthritis latinosynovitis enthesitis osteolysis newborn formation joint fibrosis and ankylosis what are all the complicated psoriasis unstable psoriasis erythrodermic psoriasis acute generalized pustular psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis what is erythrodermic psoriasis psoriasis involving more than 90 percentage body surface area is erythrodermic psoriasis what is pustular psoriasis in pustular psoriasis there will be sterile pustules will be there in fresh lesion pustules are yellow colored in old lesion pustules are brown colored what is what are the types of pustular psoriasis there are broadly divided into two types generalized pustular psoriasis and localized pustular psoriasis among the generalized pustular psoriasis there are four types acute generalized pustular psoriasis of von zumbusch type subacute annular and succinate pustular psoriasis acute generalized pustular psoriasis of pregnancy that is called impetigo herpetiformis and infantile and juvenile generalized pustular psoriasis among the localized pustular psoriasis there are two types pomoplantar pustulosis and acrodermatitis continua of halapu into the psoriatic arthritis there is a criteria for psoriatic arthritis it is called caspers criteria classification of psoriatic arthritis criteria the features include current psoriasis carries two points personal history of psoriasis one point psoriasis in your first or second degree relative one point nail psoriasis one point rheumatoid factor negative for one point current dactylitis one point history of dactylitis one point radiological evidence of juxta articular newborn formation carries one point if there is more than three points it is an indication of psoriatic arthritis 
coming to the histopathology of psoriasis skin biopsy findings from epidermis to dermis there will be compact orthokeratosis followed by parakeratosis hypogranulosis regular acanthosis and regular elongation of retail ridges that is called camel foot appearance of the retail ridges and then suprapapillary thinning of stratum olfigei and there will be two signs mundro microapsis and spongiform pustules of cogage dilated and tortuous capillaries in dermal papillae superficial perivascular inflammatory infiltrate what is mundros microapsis there will be accumulation of neutrophils in the parakeratotic parakeratotic stratum corneum what is spongiform pustules of cogage spongiform pustules of cogage is accumulation of neutrophils in the stratum beneath the layer stratum olfigi what are all the differential diagnosis first one is discoid eczema or nummular eczema second tinea carporis lichen planus secondary syphilis pityriasis rosea drug eruption candidiasis tinea unguum seborrheic dermatitis what is a discoid eczema or nummular eczema it will present as it's a type of eczema it classically present as discoid hyperpigmented scaly plaque over the extensor aspect of the extremities associated with itching and oozing secondary infection is more common in eczema and it is rare in psoriasis lesion due to the presence of antimicrobial peptides mainly beta defensins and catelicidins it will be preserved in psoriasis antimicrobial peptides are preserved in psoriasis mainly beta defensins and catelicidins whereas in eczema antimicrobial peptides are lost there will be decrease in beta defensins and catelicidins levels so there is a uh, chance of secondary infection more chance of secondary infection in eczema how to differentiate from tinea carporis tinea carporis will present as annular hyperpigmented plaque with central clearing peripheral scaling and raised erythematous borders it is a typical feature of tinea carporis what are the types of tinea lesion dermatophyte lesions what is uh, if it have a tinea affecting the scalp is called tinea capitis if it involves the face it is called tinea facei if it involves the uh, beard and mustache region it is called tinea barbe if it involves the body it is called tinea carporis if it involves the groin it is called tinea carporis tinea cruris tinea manuo means involving palms tinea pedis is involving soles and tinea unguum is involving the nail plate third differential diagnosis is lichen planus lichen planus is an auto inflammatory papillomatous disorder it is also an unknown etiology there is no clear cut etiology for lichen planus how to differentiate from lichen planus from psoriasis lichen planus will have pruritic lesions there will be extremely pruritic polygonal plain top papules and plaques mainly seen over the flexural aspect it can be associated with oral mucosal lesions what are all the oral mucosal lesions most common lesion is reticulate pattern of oral lp followed by papular plaque papular lesions plaque lesions bullous lesions atrophic lesions and erosive lesions lichen planus is can go into squamous cell carcinoma in skin hypotrophic lichen planus go can predispose to squamous cell carcinoma in oral mucosa erosive type of lichen planus can predispose to squamous cell carcinoma coming to the pityriasis rosea fourth differential diagnosis is pityriasis rosea this is an auto inflammatory or eczematous lesions in pityriasis rosea is usually preceded by upper respiratory tract infection caused by group a beta hemolytic streptococcus patient will have fever sore throat throat pain cough with expectoration followed by a skin lesions skin lesions are two types daughter patch and mother patch and daughter patch first there will be mother patch what is mother patch there will be large erythematous plaques seen over the back a single plaque will be seen followed by a daughter patches what are all the daughter patches daughter patches are nothing but multiple small erythematous papules with collarette of scales seen over the 
back. Colorate of scales is indicative of vitreous rosy. Colorate of scales are centrally detached scales and peripherally attached scales are called colorate of scales. Other differential diagnosis is seboric dermatitis. Seboric dermatitis will have oily, greasy, yellowish thick scales over the scalp. The pattern will be diffuse pattern of scales. What are all the types of seboric dermatitis? First one is classical type. Second was eczematous, vitreosiform, psoriasiform, and petaloid types. In coming to the treatment part, there will first is first is general measures, counseling regarding the natural course of the disease, weight reduction in obese patients, avoidance of trauma, reduce cessation of smoking, abstinence from alcohol, reduce emotional stress. Ex and reduce exposure to sunlight or use of sunscreens, regular use of sunscreens. Topical therapy, coming to the topical therapy, it includes emollients, corticosteroids, polter, diethanol or anthraline, calciputrile, etc. Emollients examples are white soft paraffin and liquid paraffin. Emollients will increase the hydration of the stratum corneum. It prevents transepidermal water loss, thereby increases the hydration of the stratum corneum and keeps the skin moist. Coming to the topical corticosteroids, topical corticosteroids most commonly used corticosteroids for scalp is globetasol propionate lotion along with the salicylic acid or betamethasone valerate along with the salicylic acid lotion can be used for scalp. For face, only low potent topical steroids are used. Examples of low potent topical steroids includes hydrocortisone, desonide, clobitazone. For trunk and extremities, we can use high potent topical steroids and super potent topical steroids. Examples of high potent topical steroids are beta methasone, fluticasone, and mometasone. Examples of super potent topical steroids are Clobetasol propionate, halobetasol propionate. Then Poltar can be used for stable cases and diethanol anthraline can be used for stable cases. Only short contact therapy is used for diethanol. Other topical therapy includes keratolytics and humectants. Example of keratolytics is salicylic acid. It is available as 3% and 6% ointment and 12% ointment. Example of humectant is Urea 10% and lactic acid 10% can be used. Then calcifotrial can be used, 0.005% ointment. Tazorotin can be used. And then calcineurin inhibitors like tacrolimus and pimicrolimus can be used. Tacrolimus is available as 0.03% ointment and 0.1% ointment. Whereas pimicrolimus is available as 1% ointment. Response to topical therapy. Effects of topical therapy evident in two to three weeks. Clearing of scales is usually observed first, followed by flattening of the treated blocks. Resolution of erythema may take six to eight weeks. Coming to the phototherapy, it is used for extensive and widespread disease and resistance to topical therapy. Types of phototherapy can use PUA, PUA chamber. That is combination of photosensitizing drug, mainly E8 methoxysorolone with ultraviolet A irradiation. Mechanism of action, it interferes with the DNA synthesis, thereby decreases cellular proliferation. Second mechanism of action, induces apoptosis of cutaneous lymphocytes, thereby causes localized immunosuppression. Method of administering POVA. E8 methoxysorolone is used it is administered as 0.6 mg per kg dose given two hours before irradiation. Initial dose of UVA is 2 to 5 joules per centimeter square with exposure time of 5 minutes. POVA can be administered 2 to 3 times per week in an outpatient setting should be preferably on alternate days. Every week, UVA dose increased by 20% and exposure time by 5 minutes. Maintenance treatments every 2 to 4 weeks until remission. Good relief is seen with 
20 to 30 treatments of Kova. What are the side effects? Nausea, itching, burning sensation and phototoxicity can occur. Long term complications include squamous cell carcinoma, basal cell carcinoma, cataract and disease and then photo damage to the skin. UVB coming to the UVB phototherapy. This irradiation with the light of wavelength 290 to 320 nanometer is effective for moderate to severe type of psoriasis. It's usually combined with one or more topical treatments like Coltar or Anthraline. Narrowband UVB is the most commonly used UVB for plaque type of psoriasis and it's also more effective. It uses a fluorescent bulb with a neuro emission spectrum that peaks at 311 nanometer. What are the systemic drugs used for psoriasis? And what is the indication? Resistant to both topical treatment and phototherapy, active psoriatic arthritis, physically, psychologically, socially, or economically disabling disease. And steroids, indication of steroids so used only in, used in life threatening situations like erythrodermic psoriasis and acute generalized muscular psoriasis. Cyclosporin is an immunomodulator, it is used in erythrodermic and resistant psoriasis. Side effects of cyclosporin includes can cause hypertension, nephrotoxicity, hyperplasia of gums. Systemic agents, most commonly used systemic drug is methotrexate. <coughs> it is usually administered as weekly dose. Weekly dose regimen includes 15 mg to 30 mg. Maximum we can give 30 mg per week. <coughs> Minimum we have to give for 6 months. And maximum response is usually seen after 8 weeks of methotrexate. Methotrexate is usually contraindicated in hepatic disease and renal disease. Close monitoring of blood cones and hepatic function is essential. Its mechanism of action is it inhibits the DNA synthesis by inhibiting dihydrofolate reductase enzyme and thereby it, inhib it inhibits keratinocyte hyperproliferation and lymphocyte proliferation. It's usually given as oral dose. Coming to the acid retin. Acid retin is used for it's a good, it's a, under the classification of retinoids, it is used for widespread psoriasis. It is combined with PUVA to reduce the total cumulative dose of UV radiation. It is contraindicated in pregnancy and women of child bearing age group. What are all the biological therapies, therapies used for psoriasis? It is selectively immunological directed intervention and, and inhibit the key steps in the pathogenesis of the disease. Mechanism of action is inhibits the initial cytokine release and Langerhans cell migration. Targets activated T cells, prevents further T cell activation and eliminates pathologic T cells. It inhibits pro inflammatory cytokines such as TNF alpha and interferon gamma. What are all the indications of biologicals? Severe and recalcitrant cases of psoriasis vulgaris, psoriatic arthritis, mode of administration, intravenous and subcutaneous. Examples of biological agents are TNF alpha inhibitors. Example, infliximab, tetranercept, adalimumab. Then, examples of interleukins 12, 23 inhibitors are ustikinumab. Interleukin 17 inhibitor includes secukinumab and brodalimumab. What is the prognosis of the disease? Course of psoriasis is unpredictable. It is characterized by remissions and relapses. It is often intractable to treatment. It relapses in most patients, improves in warm weather. Poor prognostic factors include smoking, alcohol, stress, HIV infection, and positive family history and early onset of the disease. Coming to the summary of the session. Psoriasis a chronic autoimmune inflammatory papillostomous disorder of unknown etiology characterized by sharply demarcated erythematous blocks with silvery white scales. Silvery white scales, what is the appearance for the silvery white color? Due to air is trapped between the layers of the scales, it gives silvery white color. Most common sites involved are scalp, extensor aspect of extremities, elbows, knees and lumbosacral region, palms and soles can also be involved. What are the uh, types of psoriasis? Psoriasis is classified into 
three types based on the body surface area mild psoriasis moderate psoriasis severe psoriasis body surface area involvement less than 10 percentage is mild psoriasis body surface area involvement between 10 to 20 percentage is moderate psoriasis body surface area involvement more than 30 per 20 percentage is severe psoriasis this is based on the body surface area another type of classification is based on the PASI score what is PASI score psoriasis area severity index so according to the PASI score it is classified into two types mild psoriasis moderate to severe psoriasis mild psoriasis is PASI score less than 10 moderate to severe psoriasis is PASI score more than 10 what are the other types of classification based on the epidemic based on the pattern it, it is classified into a block psoriasis cutted psoriasis pustular psoriasis unstable psoriasis erythrodermic psoriasis atypical forms of psoriasis includes uh, rupeoid ostracious digital interdigital and elephantine type of psoriasis based on the site it is classified into scalp psoriasis sebo psoriasis mucosal psoriasis palmoplantar psoriasis nail psoriasis inverse or flexural psoriasis differential diagnosis close differential diagnosis includes discoid eczema or numular eczema tinea corporis lichen planus and secondary syphilis and pityriasis rosea for palmoplantar psoriasis we have to rule out hand eczema and tinea manuum and tinea pedis to the treatment ladder for psoriasis first for mild block psoriasis first line of management is coal tar diethanol potent topical corticosteroids and calcifotriol second line of management is phototherapy and eczema laser can be tried for moderate to severe block psoriasis first line of management is phototherapy either PUVA or NBUB second line of management is methotrexate acetratine apramilas cyclosporin and third line of management is biologicals it includes infliximab etanercept adalimumab secupinumab and pustekinumab for psoriatic arthritis it is divided into two types two treatment ladder is divided into mild and moderate to severe for mild psoriatic arthritis we can try nsids and methotrexate for moderate to severe plaque psoriasis we have to give first line management is methotrexate Second line, you have to give biologicals. Third line is combination therapy. Thank you.